all the things that we do, perhaps one that is the most important and the most fun is bringing people in direct contact with animals. And our staff is always looking for opportunities to create these exciting encounters that our guests can share. And Sherry Harizny, our Director of Animal Programs, came up with an absolutely wonderful idea a couple years ago was standing around with a huge group of people, hundreds of people, and looked down and there was a flamingo standing there. And it was so incredible to see that animal just mingling around with a whole bunch of people. And so I started talking with the keepers that were there and asking, is this normal or do you only do this with zoo people? She said, oh, we walk them through the park every day. And it was an amazing experience for me. And so I knew it would be an amazing experience for guests at our zoo as well. We had had several years of almost no flamingo egg production at all. Our flamingos weren't producing chicks and we didn't know why. Another challenge with the flamingo is that part of our philosophy is to let our animal parents do the raising whenever possible. So we kind of needed to wait for the right opportunity when all of our staffing was in place and there was actually a flamingo that needed to be hand raised, not one that we just kind of stole for our own purposes. We had a big boom of flamingo eggs in 2012. So breeding season starts maybe the end of June, early July, and we get eggs laid all the way through September. Um, and this is Dakota coming to see us. So we started having a lot of eggs and flamingos as they generally do will fight over nests. But we also had some aggressive birds out there who wanted chicks of their own. And so what happened was we had a chick that was just a couple of weeks old and it got its wing broken during a squabble, uh, whether it was for territory or for the chick itself, we're not sure. And so it was brought to the vet hospital. We determined it had a broken wing and we knew its best chance of survival was to stay in the hospital and have its wing heal completely. But that meant now hand raising this flamingo. So you just set yourself up for almost around the clock feeding. So that impacts your people, how tired they are, your budget because you're paying overtime. And we didn't have a lot of flamingo expertise at that time either. So we started at 5 a.m. and then we fed for 12 to 16 hours at first and every two to three hours. So what we did is we blended up fish and electrolytes and some of the food that we feed adults and we made a fish slurry or a fish shake out of it. And then we put it in a syringe and then we dribble it um, into the bird's beaks just like their parents would if they were regurgitating for their chicks. And we said, okay, well, we don't want this bird to be hand raised by itself. So guess what? We're gonna do our flamingo. It's 2012, not 2015, but we're gonna go for it. We're gonna try it um, so that Dakota, our first bird who had his wing broken in the yard, could uh, heal and also have some other flamingos with him. every day is to connect our guests with the animals in our care and for some reason it's very powerful to have nothing between you and an animal so no fence no barrier no glass and that's an opportunity we have that's very powerful with the flamingo because suddenly you're standing next to a tall pink bird there's just nothing cooler than that <laughs> 